Moving on to, let's see, make sure, yep, that's number six. Number seven is a Get, Get Happy. Happy. So this is a B-side. This is by Bewitched. Spelling is a bit odd. I think it may have actually been a bad choice given the, this was probably decided before the internet really came all the rage because the, they have a, a star, which is often used as a wild card. But they're from uh, Ireland. They're not. Really? They've disbanded. Most a lot of the acts here. Very few of them are still around in any real capacity, to be honest. Yeah, well, who, uh, except who, for like who, the, who except, except well, except for the solo artists. Obviously, I think right. I think all of those are obviously still around. Britney yeah. Spears, of course, uh, Aaron Carter, right. ca- a couple others. Um, although some of them haven't published anything too recently. Yeah. So this was the B side to uh, "Say La Vie," uh, which I actually own. I own that just to get the the B side, which is "Get Happy." Um, I don't know too much. It, it's kind of a, a silly song. I guess it kind of works. Um, it's not my favorite song on the album. But it's, it's not bad. There's, there's really only like a few of these songs are actually in the movie, correct? Like, uh, about half of them, I think, are in some capacity. Really? Okay. Um, next, we have Free Up Your Mind, or I should say Hey You, Free Up Your Mind. This is by Emma Bunton, uh, also known as Baby Spice. Oh, Baby Spice. Okay, I was... Yeah, she's... Uh, she's I was like, who's Emma Bunton? Yeah, she actually had... This was not a single here in America, but after this movie, like, a couple of years ago, she had... Uh, she did a re, uh, a re-recording. She recorded the song Downtown. You know, okay. Downtown, things will be great when you're... Um, she did a recording of that. It was used in a commercial here, but I don't think it was ever a radio sing- single, but it was very popular in her native UK, where she's from, of course. Yeah. Uh, she wrote the Hey You, Free Up Your Mind. It's a B-side on. Gosh, I can't remember the. I can't remember the name of the the single it's on. It's on her solo work though, a solo single. Yeah, or? she did some solo work. Um, Weird, I didn't know that. Yeah, um, and uh, she's still around. Um, uh, she was also in, the, of course, the Spice Girls reunion tour a couple of years ago. Um, yeah. Um, so. Um, the next one is a 98 Degrees track called Fly With Me. This one you can find pretty easily. It's on yeah. iTunes. But the interesting thing for a while, it was not. This, is this entire album on iTunes? <laughs> no, actually, only about a quarter of it is. And really? actually, That's there's strange. a year ago, we actually lost a track or two. Uh-huh. I'll explain that a little bit later. Um, but uh, Fly With Me. Um, again, it doesn't have a whole lot to do with Pokemon in any way, shape, or form. But um, it, for a while, it was not on iTunes. They had the the album that's on, which is Ninety Eight Degrees and Rising, I believe. It's 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 a red cover. Um, they had every track on it except for this one, and eventually, they I guess they worked it out so that they had it on there. Um, so that is on there. That should be on most online music stores, or you can just you know find the album in uh, like a used record store or whatever you go to. It's fairly simple. Um, I don't have a lot to say about it. Okay. Okay. Now here's the good one. Here's the good one. Number ten, Lullaby. Now you you think I've never heard of Manda? Who Manda. the heck is Manda? Yeah. Well, look at if you look at the album credits, the writing credits. This was written by someone named uh, Amanda Williford. Amanda Williford. Yeah, that's actually Willa Ford, Bad Girl of Pop. She wrote and performs a Pokemon song. I'm not kidding. You've pro- maybe some of you longtime listeners have heard me say that before, but uh, yeah, what happened was was she she used to be known as Manda, and she was promoted as sort of a clean cut uh, music act. And she uh, did opening uh, for the Backstreet Boys, uh, believe it or not, uh, which will come into play in a couple tracks uh, because there's an interesting connection there. But apparently she publicly said something very not nice about the Backstreet Boys. She trashed talked them, and especially Nick Carter. <laughs> um, and so she switched labels over to Atlantic or some Atlantic uh, subsidiary. But they said, well, we really don't want to junk all the stuff you had, so we'll use your old, one of your old songs, we'll slap a Jigglypuff sample at the beginning and end, <laughs> and uh, we'll use your old stage name uh, to classify it so no one will realize that you're actually now the bad girl of Poppy who did a Pokemon song. <laughs> By the way, who, if anyone from Atlantic Records is listening to this podcast, you are a genius. <laughs> um but wow. yeah, it, it, it's one of the more bizarre uh, transformations. I like the song actually. Luckily for I guess uh, Willa, I mean Manda, um, there's nothing uh, overtly uh, risque about the song. Really, it's very, uh, very, uh, very tame. Uh, so it, it worked very well. And like I said, adding the Jigglypuff sample at the beginning and the end, it, it's really nice actually. Yeah. Sometimes I I think I like it more than the Song of Jigglypuff on Totally Pokemon. Although they're both good songs, I like both of them. They're they're quite different too. The, uh, the next one's actually one I'm pretty familiar with. Yeah, Vacation. It's vacation. the opening credits theme to Pikachu's Vacation. Right. And that, it's, that's it, a cool song. It's by, by uh, it's by an individual called Vitamin C. I forget yeah. what her real name is. She, it, she's the one that did that like graduation song. Yes, and, that that would be her most famous song yeah. by far. 
Uh, she hasn't done too much recently that no. I know of, but um, she's actually one of the older artists on the uh, maybe, soundtrack. Maybe this this album was cursed. <laughs> All these people fell off the face of the planet after well, doing Well, no, I think Britney Spears is still around. Yeah, in it's, some capacity, but without hair. <laughs> well, no, she, her hair has grown back or she's wearing a wig. I'm not sure, maybe both. But, uh, yeah, it's kind of, it's a very fun-loving song. Um you know, we don't need a holiday to start to celebrate. It's it's actually, I, I think, I, I really like it. Um, it actually reminds me, and this is sort of a sore point with me as well, is of a lot tonally of the Go-Go song, Vacation. I don't know if they were at all inspired or something like that, which is interesting because I think actually Vitamin C, I forget the real name, actually sounds a fair bit like that song if you listen to it. Yeah. Which is, un- well, the reason I don't like the, the Go Go song Vacation, it makes it very hard for me to search for covers of this song if there are any on iTunes and other services. But it, it, I like it. It's a cool song, and it's got a it's 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 a very fun song. It's one of the most fun songs on the album, uh, clearly, and it fits the the opening of that pretty well. So the next one we have is number 12, which is Making My Way Any Way That I Can. There are at least three other versions of this song. Now, it was originally written by Diane Warren, who some of you may know. Uh, she wrote uh, Where My Heart Will Take Me, which is the theme song from Star Trek Enterprise. She also wrote uh, Blame It on the Rain by Millie Vanilli, by in quotation marks there. So, <laughs> yes, yet, yet another Nintendo video game franchise has a tangential uh, connection to Millie Vanilli. Oh, right. Yeah. The Super Mario, Mario Brothers 3. episode, yeah. Uh, look that up sometime, folks. Yeah, um, the Super Mario Brothers 3 cartoon had a min- Millie Vanilli, Vanilli episode. episode. Yeah. Yes, this is the most... That is, that is right... Actually, I think that may exceed uh, Will Ford. But um, in any case, this is uh, originally... The oldest version I know of was on another movie soundtrack. It was on the uh, soundtrack to the movie The Associate, which starred Whoopi Goldberg. Um, and it was performed there by Winona Judd. And that's that's hard to find, as, as most movie soundtracks are not usually on iTunes, if they were before iTunes and other music stores started. And then there's another version by a woman named Marsha Hines. She's from either Australia or New Zealand. I cannot remember, to be honest. Um, and there's another one that was a cover by a group called the Sea Stones. So the original version by Winona Judd, it's more of a piano bar type of song. Um, it's it's very almost not really jazzy. Well, I guess it sort of is jazzy, um, but it has um, it, it's it's longer. This one um, is much more dancey. It's very much. In fact, this whole album is very dancey. You could definitely play this at a party. You just have to avoid oh, about five of the tracks, <laughs> yeah. and then no one will be aware you're playing a Pokemon CD <laughs> ever. Uh, but um, it, it's I think it's actually if you listen to the uh, commentary. On the first movie DVD, they mentioned that in the opening sequence, well, we tried some other music here. Uh, in, in the opening sequence where Ash is battling the guy. Mm-hmm. Um, and he said, no, we had to go back. We had to use the Pokemon theme because, you know, we had to let people know that this is Pokemon time and we're going yeah. to start our movie the right way. Not that this is a bad song, and hardly ever. I, but I think this, if that song, other song they had tried, is on this album, this is probably it. And I think it's a good fit really? for the franchise. I like the song. It's because it's, you know, I'm making my way any way that I can. That's sort yeah. of what Pokemon is all about, that, you know, you're not going to let people, you know, stop you or tie you down. You know what I mean? This has to be the track that makes, that makes the most sense over there. I, th- I think of all the uh, of all the repurposed songs, this probably is the best one. Okay. Um, we do play uh, the, the Winona Judd and uh, uh, Marsha Hines versions alternating weeks on PIRN. Cool. So, um... The Marsha Hines version seems to be more popular, although I just started the uh, Winona Judd version a month or so ago when I got the CD off of eBay for The Associate. It's pretty hard to find, actually. Yeah. Um, did not sell as well. If you go to Diane Warren's website, uh, she wrote the song, like I said, and a bunch of other stuff. She's written dozens of songs over the years. Um, y- she actually mentions that the, the Pokemon version and, and lists of songs and movies she's written songs for. Keep listening for more from this interview. Oh, right. Yeah. The Super Mario, Mario Brothers 3. episode. Yeah. I don't do tails and scaly whips. <laughs> I think if you do a better German accent than that, I don't know. 